Hey, it's DJ Case UK back with another video on Acid Pro. On my channel, I make videos about Acid Pro, Samforge, Spectralos, and Vegas. So, if you're interested in that sort of software, be sure to hit subscribe, and there'll be more of this sort of content on my channel. On this video, I'm going to be showing three techniques for making drum beats for Acid Pro, and these techniques also work for other doors as well. I'm also going to be explaining the pros and cons to each of these different techniques. So. With that being said, let's get into this video, three ways you can make drum beats for Acid Pro. Okay, so the first technique is making drum beats out of loops and samples. Uh, the benefit to this is that it's quick and easy. Acid Pro is designed for running loops. To do it, you can just drag in your sounds and samples. So I've got a bunch of kick loops and snare loops here, so I can just take one of these. Um, to play it, you can just click on, on the file. As long as you've got this button selected, then it will auto play it. So yeah, I'll just um, get some kicks and snares and hats together. So I'll get my kicks. So I'm going to use this one, drag it into the project, and there's there's the, the kicks. Next, I can add some snares, so that will do, and drag it into the project. So look, it's really quick to just drag it in and draw it in. If these samples sound too fast or slow, so I'll just focus on this snare for a minute. So let's say it's going too fast. I'm actually happy with that, but if it is going too fast, if you go into Clip Properties, click on the stretch tab and at the minute it's um, being sped over 32 beats so if you want it to be slower you need to drag it over more beats if you want it faster then if you put half as many so half of 32 16 then it's going to be twice as fast and so let's say I want some hats that'll do and put these in I don't even know what this is going to sound like. Let's just have a listen. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's all right. Um, next, you can get pre-made breaks as well. So let's say um, you download a whole break. I've got some wicked ones here by Ray Keefe. And again, you can just drag it into the, into the project. Now, disadvantages with this is the fact that if you're using breaks like this, and you want to add an effects to it, let's say you want to put a bit of reverb on the snare. I can't do that using a break because if I play it low, if I then add some reverb, I'm then going to add reverb onto the whole break and not just the snare that I want to add the reverb to. So by doing it separately like this, it gives me more control over what I can put effects on. So if I just want some reverb on the snare, I can just put reverb on the snare. Another disadvantage to doing this is that, let's say, I actually want the sound to be different. I actually want there to be two kicks at the start. I then have to manually edit it in order to get it how I want it to be. So let's say I want this to have two kicks at the start. I then have to manually edit it like that to get my two kicks. So that's a, a, a big disadvantage with with using pre-made loops um, when you're trying to edit it. Also, potentially, it, it costs more money to do this as well because you've got to find sample packs that have got your loops and your kicks and your snares. You can make your own. I'll cover that in more detail. You've basically got to find all your loops and samples in order to, to do it in this way. So another thing to consider when you're using these sorts of loops is the amount of space that it's going to take up on the hard drive. Like if you look at the kicks, it's got kick, 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 and that's the same kick drum four times in a loop. So the problem there is that it's going to take up a lot more space, four times as much space, as opposed to just saving the one kick and then using that kick more times, you know. So having a, a loop of, of four of the same kicks I just think is a massive waste of um, hard drive space, particularly when you've got a lot of audio files. 
Um, the problem with these kind of files, break files, is um, copyright. If somebody's released this sample pack and they've, you know, they've released a track with this sound in it, or someone's bought the sample pack and then they've made a track which they've released, that sound then becomes copyrighted. Now, with certain sample packs, you can still release it, but then you're not going to be able to get the publishing rights on your track. And sometimes you might make a track and you could send it and it will just get rejected because, you know, the sound's been used on other productions. So when you've got um, loops, particularly, you know, from popular sample packs, that is going to have been released so many times that you're not really going to be able to get the full publishing rights on that track. The audio recognition on computers these days is very good. You know, literally you can play two seconds of a track and it will instantly recognise it. You know, like when people put mixes on YouTube, um, it recognises the, the audio if you've played somebody else's track and it will then issue a copyright warning. So it's, it can be very risky using breaks. I tend to use breaks on productions where I'm doing like a remix of something else. It's going to be better for me because I'm not wasting all of my effort putting my own kicks and drums and snares and hi-hats making all my own drums when because I've you know made a remix of somebody else's track it's already going to be copyrighted I'm, ne I'm never going to be able to release that so why spend all that time making an original break when you're never going to be able to release it anyway you might as well save all of your original breaks for your own productions you know and so, yeah, I tend to just use breaks for remixes, really, or just as a template guide for, you know, making my own breaks. Okay, so the second technique is something that you've been able to do since Acid Pro 5. And that is what I call um, finger drumming. So in Acid Pro, if I right click and add a MIDI track, and change it, insert synth and select the Sony DLS soft synth and now here I can select what instrument the soft synth is playing so you've got a whole orchestra of sounds here and if you go down to drum kits you've got seven different drum kits you can choose from which are already mapped to the keyboard so I'm just going to click the standard one draw in a, an empty MIDI track like so now if I enable my inline MIDI editing, um, you can see all of the the sounds are, are mapped onto the onto the keyboard. When I press a note on the keyboard, I can then start freestyle playing. So that's why I call it finger drumming, because you're basically drumming the notes um, with with the keyboard. So you can put the, the metronome on and hit re hit record. And it will start drawing the notes in. So they're the notes which I've just drawn drawn in. And so the pros and cons to this then. The pros is that you can kind of get into a bit of a flow. You can put your metronome on and then just start, you know, just start drumming away, recording it and, and going from there. Disadvantages, though, I think to this is it's putting all of your drums on the same track. So here's the bit that I've just recorded. So we're going to have the same problem that I mentioned on the, on, in the first, thing, which is that let's say I want to put a reverb on the snare it's going to put the reverb on all of this as opposed to the bit that I want. Now you could then cut these little bits out and make separate MIDI tracks or you could duplicate the uh, the MIDI track and then just cut, delete the bits you don't want. So like, you know, I've got my kicks on the top one, then I could just delete the kicks out of this other one and just leave the snares in. But again, you're kind of creating a lot of work for yourself by doing that. And also it's probably not as accurate as well like for example, when I go into this, um, let's say I want these exactly on the beat, but I haven't drummed them on the beat. I've then manually got to go in and put these, you know, right on the line. Now you can um, quantize this. So 
you hit the button here, you can quantize it and, you know, snap it to, you know, eight, eight notes or half notes, like or whole notes. So let's say I want to put these on half notes, hit apply. That will then snap stuff into beats. But again, I think you just, it's just creating a lot of extra work for yourself. Also, you're limited by the drums that you can use. You've got seven drum kits here and you can get other plugins for, you know, making custom drum kits where it gives you, you know, 16 keys on your keyboard and you can map those to a different sound. But again, it all just comes back to the fact that it then just puts all of your drums on one track and then you've probably got to snap stuff in onto the grid and it's just a lot of a lot of work. When Ableton came out, this technique is something that has become more popular because well, it looks cool, doesn't it? You know, if you see a video of someone banging away on, you know, making drum beats, it, it kind of looks, it looks good. Um, but I, personally, I just don't really find it as accurate to do it this way. Uh, I think you're also limited as well by the number of fingers you have as well. You know, for example, you know, you know it might be easy to, to do a kick and a snare, but then you've got to have another finger for doing all your hi-hats, you know, so you're probably going to find you're doing multiple takes to do each part, like adding the kicks, then adding the snares, and then adding the hi-hats. So potentially, it, like I say, I think you're just making a lot more work for yourself doing it this way. It's something that's definitely been encouraged more in, in Ableton or Cubase, where you can where snapping the beats onto the grid is, is a lot easier. But yeah, you can do it in Acid Pro if, if that's something you want to do. Okay, so the third technique, this is my personal favorite, is to just build it from scratch. So instead of having a whole loop of kick drums, I just have all of the individual kick drums saved individually and all the snares saved individually. Just one little kick, one little noise, and that's it. So it takes up a lot less space and you've got a lot more control over how you build your breaks. So let's say I just want to make a, a little drum section here. I can pick the drums I want. So I want so I want a, a kick here. Now doing it manually I can just put them exactly where I want them to be. So if I want it there to be two here, I can just draw in the second one and just draw it like this. So the disadvantage is is obviously you've got Potentially you've got more work to do because you you know you're manually drawing it in or copying and pasting bits. But you have got a lot more control over doing this. Like if I just want to put an effect on my kicks there, I can put an effect on the kicks. Uh then I can maybe start adding some snares, so that'll do. You know, I can just individually have more control over each each individual part of the the break which I'm building here. I mean, potentially I could render this into a loop, but then you're going to have the problems I mentioned before, going to make things difficult further down the line. So I'm just going to add in some hi-hats now. You can just draw a whole load of these if you get the paint tool. Instead, you can actually just draw a whole group of these. So you can still draw it like you can with a loop if you use your paint tool. If you use the pencil tool, you can just have more control by doing you know, one at a time. But as I say, I think this is the best way for making drum beats because you've just got more control over each individual part. So, and also each one of these samples, like that little hi hat, you know, when you compare it to to the loops that we had earlier. So, like when you look at this hi hat loop at the top here, you've got all of this section here for the for the hi hats, and you can see the amount of space it's going to take on the hard drive four times as much space that you have to have on your hard drive to have a loop like that. Everybody make some noise for the DJ So that's my three techniques for making drum beats in Acid Pro. Hope you found the content useful. Be sure to subscribe, hit like, share the video, leave a suggestion in the comments for any other videos you want to see in the future. 
uh, that's it on this video thanks for watching see you on the next video if you found this content useful be sure to like share comment and subscribe and let me know what you want to see on the next video that's it for this video thanks for watching see you on the next video